Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer McGuire, and I am here today with my good friend Christina Werner. Say hi, Christina. Hi. Okay. <laughs> and we are doing another Q and A. We've done a few of these before, where we ask you what questions you want us to answer, and we never get to them all. So we thought we would do another and kind of go back to some of those questions that we missed. Did so, you do you have, have something to say before we start? Oh, we're doing a doing a big giveaway over on my blog. Uh, for Erin Condren uh, Life Planners, just anywhere on their website, their gift certificates. Um, I'm a big fan of the Erin Condren Planners, and I know Christina likes them too. And so we have a t how many gift cards are we giving away? I believe we have 30. 30? $30, $300 gift cards. Yes. Because because we like to share. <laughs> it's <right>? crazy. <laughs> no, well, I guess we can talk about this now. When you guys make purchases over at Erin Condren and sign up for their mailing list or whatever to get your $10 off and you do so through the link at my blog or the link at Jennifer's blog. We're using the same link so it all goes to one big pot so we can give these away to you guys. Um, when you do that, we receive a $10 gift certificate as well. So we've just been like banking them and saving them for a long, long time and now we have enough to give away 30 $100 gift cards. So and We just recently on your blog gave away 20, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. So, well, it was, it was like before Christmas. It was a while back. But yeah. Yeah. Hey. So, so we love giving excited to share. Yeah. Cool. So I have the questions on my computer, so I'll read them off. But we're both going to answer. So. Oh, good. Now, Audrey just walked in, so hold on. Hey, Audrey. You want to say hi, Audrey? Hey. You're going to be hi. on the YouTube. You want to be on YouTube? Yeah. You can say hi. <laughs> really just barely home from school. She's got her backpack on and everything. Yeah. She's got her Starbucks, though. This is Audrey. Audrey's going to be the next Christina Werner. I'm so <laughs> excited. <laughs> she wants to be a graphic designer. Say bye, Audrey. <laughs> I think we're great at it already. What? She's pretty great at it already, too. Yeah, she is. She is. Thankfully, in their high school, they have... Um, graphic design classes, so she gets to try it out before she has to, you know, make a commitment in college. I wish they had that when I was in school. I had to take regular art classes, and then they told me it couldn't be a designer. That's another story for another day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so questions, right? Okay, yes, first questions. question is from Kristen Gerbman Sieber. I think that's how you say her name. She wrote, it seems like new stamp products are constantly being released. Do you ever get overwhelmed by the new product or feel pressure to showcase it? How do you select which products make the cut? Do you want to go first or should I? Uh, sure. The answer is yes. I totally get overwhelmed because there's so much stuff I want to use, but I normally don't get overwhelmed until I have it in my hands because I don't realize it, but I'm like, add to cart, add to cart, add to cart, and then when it comes, or if a company sends me product, then I'm like, dang it, there's too much cute stuff, and I can't use it all. So sometimes, um, well, actually this is how it's been recently. I try to plan out my month a little bit, and so I'm like, okay, I'll use paper smooches on this day. I'll use Mama Elephant on this day. And, and I try to fit them all in because I want to use everything, but um, most of the time there are things that I don't get around to using, which is super, super sad, but then I save them, and possibly give them away to you guys. So that's the answer. Yes, I do get overwhelmed. I will say the same. Especially, it seems like the past few weeks, there have been, well, actually, the past couple months, I guess since CHA, there have been so many great products that have come out. And I have a, when I get, when I get new stuff, some of them, like Christine and I get some things from companies, but we also buy a lot. Yeah. Um, so, okay. so I mean, it, we, we spend, it, we get the whole, you know, this is an expensive hobby thing, but I have a drawer where when I get something new, I put it in my storage pockets, and I have a drawer where I keep it of all new stuff that I want to use, and that drawer is like overflowing right now because there have been so many great products, like those W plus 9 elephants. I really want to find time to use them. I just haven't had a chance. I mean, Christine and I have commitments with the online classes we teach, and sometimes I can make those work with whatever my assignment is in that class, 
but on my blog, I just, I don't know, if I have something new and I have an idea, because I always put a technique in my cards, I got to have a technique to go with it. So just because something is super cute doesn't mean that I use it right away because I, I got to think of a technique that works with it. So that's how I end up deciding what I use. Um, I, I rarely have to use something because I'm not on any design teams. And when I, if a company does give me product, there's not like a commitment to, for a certain assignment, you know, and I don't think you do that really, Christina, either. Every so once in a while. But yeah, so it's really about what products we love and what I like, what ideas I have at the moment. And I'll keep them for a long time and I, I won't give up. <laughs> I'll find time to use them, but I don't get to create as much as I used to. The older the kids get, the more work they are. So I don't get to create as much as I used to, but um, I don't give up. <laughs> I hope that I can go use those elephants. And I have a box with stuff like that too. A big, a big bin that has all of the stamps and dies and everything that I want to use. So, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So. Yeah, it's true. And every once in a while, I'll go through and weed it out. Like if I'm like, okay, I'm not going to get to this one, um, I, I'll, I'll weed it out. But eventually, I'll use it in some way. Like even if I end up using a few sets on one card, that's because I'm dying to use all those. So, for sure. Okay, the next question is from Laura Helen Lester, who asks, what are some good starter dies for a new cuddle bug or big shot owner? Do you want to take this first? Oh, okay. So I am a huge I, I'm a huge fan of die cutting, and I'll admit, I think I like die cutting more than stamping. What? Right that now. That surprises me. I know. For the past a year I'd say because the the I like techniques and I really think there's a lot that you can do with dies. I now I don't use them on every card, but I, I use stamps more, but I think I enjoy being creative with the dies. So so I heard of this great die class. <laughs> <God. Nice. laughs> um yeah, it's called Stretch Your Dies <laughs> and it's over on my card classes. Sorry, I had to I had to plug it really quick because we were talking Fine. about it. That is our class. It's starting on Monday. You can register at onlinecardclasses.com. Okay, moving on. And it's lifetime access, so if you're busy, you can go back and take it later. I've been known to take them later. So um, so dies, I, I, um, I'm I, a big fan of the dies that are most practical, like the stacking die sets. Um, what do you call them, Christina? I call them stacking. Um, nesting. Nesting, okay. Nesting. So where you have like a circle die and it's a bunch of circles together in one set. Um, I really like those because they're so versatile. And a lot of times they're basic shapes, hearts, squares, um, uh, circles. But I like those especially with like the faux stitched edge because that's something I can't do on my own and I can't really do with punches. I think punches, I got rid of all my punches because it's just a storage challenge and the dies are so much more versatile. So I recommend those stacking or nesting dies and also word dies. You know, there are so many great word dies out there and I recommend the ones that are most intricate because they just look dynamite when they're added to a card. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of companies who make them. Um, Memory Box does some great ones. Simon Says Stamp. I mean, there's almost every company now has great word dies. So what I would recommend doing is a word that you think you use a lot, like say you use thanks a lot, which is what I use most. Just go to um, an online stamp or store or whatever and do a search on thanks die and you'll see a ton of options come up and just get whatever appeals to you. But I think those stacking and the word dies and little hearts, like little heart confetti or whatever so you can kind of scatter them on your card and kind of fill in spaces. Those are the ones I use the most. So, totally, I would agree. Um, I would say if you're trying to decide on what like stackable or nesting die set to get first, mm -hmm. because they can be expensive, because usually they have a lot of dies yeah. in them. Circles. I'd go for circles absolutely first, because that is something that you can't really mimic with your paper trimmer, yeah. or it's really difficult with your scissors. So go for circles. Um, and there are, like Jennifer mentioned, there are ones that have the dash lines or the stitching. Or there's ones that are plain. Um, 
I, you know what, maybe get one that has the stitching only on one side so that you can use the outside shape for a clean without the stitching, or you could use the stitching on the inside, or the other way around, either way. Um, I don't know, it's really up to you, but I would really suggest circles before any other shape. Definitely. But then also hearts. I know Memory Box has kind of like a nesting heart, so I think it's called Cherub Heart die yep. set, where it's a bunch of, you know, a large heart, small, and then going into the inside. So that one's a really good one that's nesting, too. Mm -hmm. um, gosh. Yeah, so those are the shapes. And I agree on the word dies. I would suggest going for word dies as well. Um, if you really, really love a stamp set that has a coordinating die set, um, maybe consider it. Just, just try it out and see if you like that. Um, I don't use them too, too often. I tend to mostly use like the basic shapes and things like that, but you could possibly find one of those stamp and die sets that has some basic shapes in it. Like I know Lawn Fawn, a lot of their stamp sets will include like a heart or a cloud or something, and there will be an associated die with it. So you could use those dies without the stamps. So you get kind of most bang for your buck. Yeah, I, I don't often get the, like if it's just, if the die set is just to cut out a specific stamp set, I know a lot of people love those, love that they don't have to fussy cut, but I I find that a lot of those coordinating die sets can be expensive, and I'd rather get like another stamp set or a unique die set. So it's just a decision you have to make, and it depends on how you craft. I mean, there's some people who love the coordinating dies. Um, it's just something that I don't use all that often. Totally. Okay, the third question, and we're doing four questions today, by the way. The third question is from Peggy Kempf, who asks, how do you come up with ideas day after day? Um, I'll answer this one first, since you did the last one. Um, well, part of it is my job, and I've been doing it for a long time. So just like any other muscle in your body that you know strengthens over time if you keep using it, so does your ability to kind of brainstorm and come up with ideas. So I would recommend, if you're having trouble with that, really try to sit down every day and just think of something you could possibly create or put out some products out on your desk and just kind of brainstorm and think about how you can use them. And I think over time, the more and more that you do that, the more you train your brain to kind of make those connections a little bit more quickly. So I think that's one suggestion I would make. That's a good one. Um, I, I don't know. I think of a lot of my ideas after I say my prayers and I'm laying in bed at night. That seems to be where a lot of mine go do them right away. <laughs> yeah. And I also spend about two, two and a half hours in the car every day taking kids to school and stuff. So when I'm driving, I think about stuff. Um, so I'm always thinking of techniques and then when I get home I write them in my Erin Condren planner <laughs> which you could win right awesome. um, I write the ideas down and sometimes I don't know what stamps or dies or whatever I'm going to use them with so I just kind of keep a list of, of techniques and then when I find something that would work with it I can go and look at the list so I keep kind of a list of products I want to use and you know, or I have them all in a drawer or techniques I want to use and I just try to find the right match. But I, this is my job too, so I don't know. It's just kind of how we're wired, I think. But I you know, the more there are times when I struggle and I know Christina hits that too and we, we talk about it a lot and sometimes we have to help each other out of it, but um, then there's times where it's like there's not enough hours in the day. So it's just like anything, you know, as a mom you've one day you feel like you're a complete flop, and the next day you feel like a rock star. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably more the the first, but um, <laughs> it it just ebbs and ebbs and flow. I mean, it just comes and goes. Um, but it's our passion, so totally. And I have no life, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what happens when your hobby becomes your job. Yeah, you do it for more hours in the day, but sometimes yeah. it's a struggle too. Oh, so. yep. Okay, last question is from Ladine um, Ariola. I guess that's how you say her last name. I, she has the same last name as my high school chemistry teacher. No, not chemistry. Uh, Pre-calculus. Maybe she is your class. calculus teacher. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think that was her first name. That's okay. <laughs> it's all the same. Mm -hmm. um, she asks, the steps of starting your own web page or blog. 
Uh, yeah. I would recommend, if you've never done it before, ever, to find a free blogging source. So I would recommend either Blogger or WordPress.com. WordPress.com is like the free blogging site where you can sign it for your own. WordPress.org is for your, if you have your own domain and you want to do all the technical stuff, which when I think you're starting out, you probably don't want to deal with. So I would recommend just WordPress.com or Blogger.com. I think those are both really good sources. Yeah, I, to be honest with you, I, I started my blog not that long ago. I mean, it was maybe maybe seven years ago, if that long. What year did you start? I don't know. <laughs> I, I think it was only like seven years ago because I was late to the blog. You didn't start until like 2008? Yeah, I didn't. I was I was late. I'll have to go back and look. Maybe it was before that. I don't. Anyways, I was later than a lot of people because I didn't think I wanted to do that. And so I decided to start a blog as a the hobby part of my craft because I was working for some companies at the time. I was working like for Here Arts and a company called Autumn Leaves. So I all the things that I were creating were using those companies' products because I was consultants for them. So I started my blog as a way to just create for fun, and uh, it kind of morphed into what my job is. So I don't remember. I just remember people recommended TypePad, and it was like 10 bucks a month or something. It's not much, um, and it was basic. And then when I kind of outgrew that, I hired somebody to move it over to WordPress and design it. Things. But I think the best thing to do if you're just starting out is to, like Christina said, get one of the free ones and see how it goes. You may find you don't like it, you know, and you don't want to put a lot of time or money into a blog if you're not sure it's for you. Because I'll be honest, I went to engineering school because I disliked writing so much, and then I started a blog. And so <laughs> writing for me is very hard. I struggle. It's terrible. I struggle with it. I spend a lot of time on it, and then the end result isn't that great. But um, I know that. So I, I don't know that blogging may not be something you enjoy. So just try one of the free ones and see how it goes. Totally. And if you need like encouragement or something, there's a lot of challenge blogs out there yeah. that you know you post your own work on, and you can link to your blog or whatever. So. Those are a good way to kind of start your own blog, too, if you're not entirely sure what you want to include on your blog quite yet. Yeah, and a lot of people ask, you know, how to really get serious or started in the crafting world online or making a career of it or whatever. I always say, get a blog, share your work, um, you know, try these challenge blogs. And also people ask, how do you make friends in the industry? Because I have a lot of friends in the industry, and Christina does, too. Um, that's a great way. I know a lot of people have made great friendships through like challenge blogs or some of the communities or um, companies have um, you know Flickr groups or whatever. A, a lot of people like Hero Arts had a Flickr group a long time ago, and that's where so many friendships were made. So is that where you met Kathy? I'm yeah, actually, I Kathy Rakusen, one of our friends. She, I when I was um, Hero Arts, we used to have Hero Hostesses where they. We picked people that we thought were really good to kind of contribute and stuff, and I picked her for a day because she had done this Santa holding a list of the good and bad or good kids or whatever, or I don't know, whatever. But it was this card that was just astonishingly good, and we became friends that way. But a lot of a lot of friendships form out of those kind of groups. So if you're looking to make friends with people, those kind of blogs um, or groups are wonderful places to do so. And you know, if you want to get noticed by companies, a lot of times that's where people are found. I know a lot of people who have um, different kinds of gigs with companies because they were active on that stuff. Totally. And most of those people weren't like looking for the gig. Like they just were naturally sharing and people noticed it. Absolutely. I think when people ask, like, how do I start working with design teams or how do I get noticed yeah. by companies, I always say, well, are you using their product? Because yeah. if you are and your work is excellent, it will speak for itself and they will find you naturally. Um, my very first design team was for American Crafts, 
And I remember I like went over to my local Michaels, or I don't think it's Michaels, it was Roberts at the time. There was a Roberts craft yeah. and bought a bunch of American craft stuff and then went home and like made you know, like three or four scrapbook pages with it because I was scrapbooking at the time. Right. And that's what I used, you know, I took pictures of them and sent them to the design team coordinator. And that's how they knew me and became familiar with me. So um, yeah, if you have a dream company that you want to work with, make sure you're using their product and that you're showcasing it in an awesome way because they will take notice. And I think companies are less and less doing design team calls. It mm -hmm. seems like there's less calls out, you know, where you, you apply. And it's just that they, instead, they're finding their design team members by just seeing their work and inviting them. So the more you have your stuff out there, the more likely you are to be noticed. And some of these companies really look hard. Like Hero Arts, I started working for them maybe, oh gosh, a little, 10 years ago. And they found me, the, the owner f saw my work somewhere, and I had never stamped. I was a scrapbooker, and they were looking to get into the scrapbook industry, and they saw my work and contacted me. So some of these really good companies will just, they will go out and find people. So if you have your work out there, um, it's easier to be found. For sure. Cool. Well, so the giveaway, like we said before, is for 30 we have 30 gift cards to give away, and it's at Jennifer's blog. Do you want to give details on how to enter? Yeah, you just go over to my blog at jennifermaguireinc.com, and that's I-N-K, and we'll have a link below, and you just leave a comment, and we will randomly pick 30 people, and it's open to anybody, anywhere. And if you live somewhere cool, I might have to hand deliver it just because I want to go on vacation. <laughs> totally. Not really. not really. I'd like to, but not really. <laughs> Can someone in Utah win, and then we can get Jennifer out here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you guys for watching, and you can visit my blog at kwarnerdesign.com or over at my YouTube channel. I'm sure Jennifer will have links below yep. as well. I will link to everything. Absolutely. Thanks for thank watching, guys. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.